What's going on guys? In this video we're going to build and deploy a modern website, meaning we're using all modern techniques like CSS Grid, Flexbox, we're going to add a little bit of animation. You'll see if I reload this we have some animation going on. We're going to use pseudo selectors, uh, span grid columns and rows. So basically what this is, is a fake It's like a fake cloud hosting platform. I just called it Laruki. I used Heroku as kind of a, a guide for the content here. And we're going to have three pages, home features and docs. This is the home page. We have our nav bar. We have this showcase area with a form to request a demo that actually works. So as we say John Doe, company name, just say test, test at test.com. And if I submit, It's going to go ahead and submit the form because I, we what we're going to do is deploy this to Netlify, which has form submission services. So we have that down here, just some stats with some fun, awesome icons. We have a little fake NPM install. This, this is not a real program. It's just for, you know, for this website. And we're going to be using CSS Grid to align everything. We're going to span across rows and columns. We have this little section here, supported languages and a footer. So that's the home page features. So we have these two areas here. And then again, we'll be using CSS grid for this part here and then the docs. So we have this header area here and then these columns with some links. We're going to have a lot of different utility classes for things like background colors, buttons, cards, even alerts like this. So it's almost like we're creating a mini framework. We're going to have a separate utilities.css file for that stuff. It's also responsive, so we'll make this a little smaller. So you can see this is around tablet right here. We change the direction of the animation. Everything still looks good. We're going to add this little slant using transform skew. And if we go to even smaller, you'll see the menu changes. Looks nice on mobile screens. So we're going to do quite a bit here. It's going to take a while, but you have a really cool project that you'll have afterwards. This was actually going to be part of a, a, a premium course. I was going to add it to either my HTML and CSS Udemy course or another one, but I decided to just throw it up on a YouTube video. So hopefully you like it. Uh, again, we're going to deploy it to Netlify. We're going to make this form work. So let's get started. All right, so let's get started on our website. So I have a folder that I created uh, on my desktop called Laruki website, and I opened it within my text editor, which is VS Code, Visual Studio Code. That's what I'm using. That's what I recommend, but of course you can use whatever text editor you want. And then I have my browser open on the right, which I'll probably have to make this a little bigger later on. So in here, you can see I have an images folder with a bunch of images. We have a bunch of programming logos for the home page. You can get all of these images in the GitHub repository in the description if you're going to follow along, which I would definitely suggest doing. So let's create our index HTML, which is going to be our home page. Also for our style sheets, let's create a folder called CSS and for now just a style.css file. Okay, I'm just going to close up the um, sidebar for now. So in our index HTML, let's create a boilerplate with Emmet using exclamation enter. And for the title here, we'll call this uh, Laruki. And let's put a pipe character and we'll just say cloud hosting for everyone. All right, and then we want to link in our style sheet. So we'll add a link tag here with the rel attribute of style sheet and an href of CSS slash style CSS. I'm also going to be using font awesome. So the easiest way to work with font awesome is to use the CDN, which we can get from CDNJS.com. If you just search for font and click on font awesome, we want the this all dot min dot CSS. So I'm going to copy the link tag and just paste that in. And that will allow us to use font awesome classes to create icons. Now, we're just going to kind of take this section by section. We're going to start with the nav bar. So I'm just going to actually comment this nav bar and we want a div with the class of nav bar. And this is going to hold the logo, which in this case will be just an H1 and also the menu, the navigation. So I do want to wrap this in a container as well, because We don't want like the logo going all the way over on huge screens. We want to end it at a certain point. So we'll have a container that'll be about 1100 pixels max. So we'll have that container. And then in that we'll have the H1, give it a class of logo. And I'm just going to use the website name here, Laruki, and then a nav 
uh, navigation with a nav tag and that will have an unordered list with some list items that have links. So this one will go to index.html. It's our home page. I'm going to copy this down on Windows in VS Code. You can do shift alt down on Mac shift option down if you want to just copy line down. So the second one will be features and it's going to go to features.html and then we'll have docs dot html and text will be docs. All right, so I'm going to save that. Now, I could just open index html right on my file system, but I have an extension called live server which you can get by just searching here live server and you can install it and then we can just open it by saying, you know, right click open with live server. And that'll open in the browser and anytime I edit any html or css, it's going to update automatically. So we don't we don't have to keep reloading. So in our style sheet, let's start off with just some some base styles. The specific font that I want to use is um, Lado or Lado. I'm going to get it from Google Fonts, which I have here as a bookmark. So fonts.google.com and we search for Lado. Click on that. I'm going to select the light 300, select the style, embed, and then I'm going to grab the import syntax right here and put that right in my CSS. Okay. And then underneath that, I'm going to create a reset. So I'm going to use the universal selector, which is an asterisk. So basically, you know, all elements, I want to set the box sizing to border box. And I use this on just about everything I do with CSS. It allows us to add padding and borders and stuff without having to add to the width of an element. And then let's also just add a reset for the padding. So set that to zero. Also the margin. Okay, so we're just zeroing out the padding and the margin on everything. And you can see up here that there's no more margin on the body, there's no padding on the on the unordered lists or anything like that. Because you do have default margin and padding on some elements just from the browser. And then for the body, let's set the font family. I'm going to set that to Lado sans serif. Okay, so that'll change our font. Let's also change the color to 333, which is just a, you know, a dark gray. And then I'm going to set a line height. So line height, I'm going to increase that to 1.6 just to spread things out a little bit. And then for ULs, let's just make sure that we don't have any bullet points. So list type none or list style type none. And for the links, we want to get rid of the ugly underline. So text decoration is going to be none. And you can see as I'm saving, it's updating over here. I want to change the color as well to the same color as the text. Now for headings for H1 and H2 headings, I'm going to set the font weight to 300, which will make it a little less bold. And I also want to take the line height and make that 1.2. So we'll lessen that up a little bit. but I do want to have a margin on the top and bottom of 10 pixels. So top and bottom 10, left and right 0. And then I do want to have on the paragraphs some margin on the top and bottom just so that they're not squished together and you can actually tell, you know, the paragraphs apart. So we'll add that. And then finally I just want to add on images a width of 100% which will keep the images within their container. So even if it's a large image, it's not going to bust out of its, its container, it's going to take 100% of that container. So th that's it for like the base styles for now. So let's start to style the nav bar which is, you know, this whole thing right here. So the class of nav bar I'm going to add a background color to. So the color that I'm going to use is a hexadecimal blue. So let's do uh, number sign 047 AED for that. And the color of the text we're going to make white to give it some contrast. Now the links won't turn white yet because we set the links to be or the A tags to be this color here, but we'll fix that in a little bit. Um, in addition to that, I just want to make the nav bar a height of Let's do 70 pixels. Okay, the content is busting out of it right now, but ultimately this stuff will be aligned horizontal. Now, the container, I want to do that because you can see if I stretch this out really wide, 
this is always it's always going to be way over to the side same thing when we put the links over here and i don't want that i want to have a container where it ends like here to here so we'll make an uh, an 1100 pixel wide container so let's add container and let's set a max width to 1100 pixels and then we want it in the middle obviously so we'll set the margin to zero on the top and bottom and auto on the left and right so now if i stretch this out past 1100 pixels it stays there all right so that makes it a little more clean looking and then also on the container here uh, let's take care of this this space right here is because of the heading so the h1 here has a, mar a margin top of 10 pixels and that's where this space is coming from. We can fix that by adding an overflow on this and setting that to auto. And now we get rid of that space. And then I also want just a little bit of padding on the left and right. So we'll say padding. Let's do padding zero on the top and bottom 40 on the left and right. And now that'll push that over a little bit, even if it's on a smaller screen than 1100 pixels. So that's the container. Now we want to align this. Basically, we want the H1 over here. We want the nav over here on the right. So what we'll do is we'll use Flexbox and make this div a Flexbox container. And then that will make the H1 and the nav Flexbox items and we can align them however we want. Now, I don't want to put display flex on the container itself. So I'm going to add a utility class of flex and then we'll add it down here. So let's say display flex, which is going to now turn it into a flex column. And you can see that the the uh, nav. So the second flex item, which is the nav, is now on the side of the H1 because it's in a row. Um, we could say flex direction and set that to a column and it would still be a flex box, but it would go this way instead. Now, as far as alignment, we have justify content. And if I just set that to center, it's going to move everything to the center this way on the horizontal axis or on the main axis, I should say. Um, and then if you want to align things going vertically, then we could do align items center. Now, if this were a column, like if I change this to a flex direction column, that would make justify content pertain to vertical alignment, because now this is the main axis since it's a column. This would be the cross axis if it's a column, which would be align items. But since we're using a row that makes this the main axis and this cross. OK, so justify content always pertains to the main align items pertains to the cross. So let's add, uh, let's see, so we have align items. Let's also make sure that the height is 100 percent of whatever the container is. Uh, and we will see this scroll bar on the side here for now, just because our UL is, is, you know, it's still going this way. Ultimately, it's going to be over here and the links are going to go horizontal. Now, as far as the justify content goes, so aligning it this way, I don't want to put this these both in the middle. I want them on each side. So I'm going to change justify content from center to space between, which takes this remaining space and puts it between the flex items. So if I save that, you can see now that space is put in between. However, this flex class, I want to be able to use this in other places. And usually, most likely, it's going to be center instead of space between. So what I'll do is up here, we have our nav bar. I'm going to go right below it and say nav bar flex. So the, if, if, if flex is in the nav bar, then will have space between otherwise then let's have this center. All right, so I'll save and we still get the same result here. Now we should probably work on the on the links here. We want these to be, you know, horizontal. Um, so what we'll do is set. Let's see, so we'll set on the nav bar. The UL let's display flex and as soon as I do that you'll see that they're going to line up in a row horizontally um, now the links let's say navbar a and first thing I want to do is just make them white so we can see them 
and then we just want to break them up a bit. So let's do padding on the links 10 pixels and then I'll break them up a little more with margin as well. So margin will be zero top and bottom five pixels left and right. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I do want to have a little hover effect where we have a border on the bottom when we hover. So let's say our nav bar links in the hover state. I'm going to set a border on the bottom of let's do two pixels white solid. Okay, so if I save that and now we hover over these, we get the little border on the bottom. Okay, and if I make this wider, it's going to look like that, which looks pretty good. Now I'm not going to do I mean, this is pretty responsive just because we only have three links, but if we had more, this would run into this. So we're going to do the media queries towards the end um, to make this responsive. So we're essentially building desktop first. You have desktop first and you have mobile first. And the only time that I do mobile first is if I think that there's going to be more use of the website or the application on mobile devices. Otherwise, I'll do the desktop version first and then I'll add the media queries to style the, the mobile version. So now we want to do the showcase area, which is going to have, you know, some text over here. It's going to have a form on the right. So let's go right under where we have our nav bar and let's add showcase. So this is going to have a section. We're going to use an HTML5 section tag with the class of showcase. And inside here, I want to use a container because again, I don't want this to go all the way up against the screen. I want it to have that 1100 pixel container. And then we're going to have a, a utility class of grid, just like we did with flex. So we can use these, you know, flex and grid in multiple places. And then if we need to specifically customize the, you know, the showcase grid, we can do that as well. Now in here, we're going to have two element or two divs that are going to be grid containers. I'm sorry, grid items inside of the grid container. First is going to be, let's call this showcase dash text. So this will be the left side. It's going to have an H1 that says easier deployment and then a paragraph, which I'm going to just grab real quick and paste in. And then underneath the paragraph, we're going to have a link that's going to be formatted as a button. So we'll have a BTN class, also a BTN dash outline class. And this is going to go to features .html, and we're going to say read more. Okay, so if I save that, that's what it's going to look like right now. Under the showcase text div is going to be the second grid item, which is going to be showcase dash form. And this is going to be put into a card, which is like, a, you know, a background have a background color with padding and rounded borders and stuff. So we want to have those two classes and then we want an H2. We'll say request a demo and under the H2 we'll have our form. We don't need an action. Get rid of that. And in the form, let's have a form dash control. And you'll notice I'm stealing a lot of the bootstrap class names. We're not using bootstrap. We're going to create our own cards and form control. But I like to use these these names. So inside here we'll have our inputs and it's going to be type text. Let's give it a name of Oops, what I do. So type text, let's give it a name of name and let's give it a placeholder of name. I'm actually going to make both of these a little bigger and we'll just switch back and forth. All right, so we have input name. So we'll just grab this form control. We want two more of these. This next one is going to be company for the name. So company and then the placeholder will say company name. And then this last one is going to have a type of email. It's going to have a name of email and it's going to have a placeholder of email. And let's actually make these required as well. So we can use simple validation here by adding required onto the end of these inputs. Required and I'm going to make all of these required. All right. And then we need a button. So under the last form control, let's do an input with the type of submit value will be send and let's give it a class 
of btn and btn dash primary. So if we save, it's going to look horrible right now. So we need to start to style it. Let's jump into our style sheet. And I just want to add a comment here. So this is the nav bar styling. And then down here, these are utilities. What I mean by utilities is classes that we'll use all around the website. Um, and then this is going to be the showcase. And I might call this hero sometimes because that's what I initially called it when I created this, but I decided to change it to showcase. So let's see for showcase. We're going to have uh, we're going to have a height of 400 pixels and a actually let's add the background color. Now the background color, I'm going to use the same blue that we have for our nav bar. So this blue here. So this is a good opportunity to use custom properties, which are basically just variables in CSS so that you know, if we have the same color and it's repeated five times in the CSS, we can just put it in a variable and just change it there. So I'm going to cut that from here for a second and then go up to the top. And the way we define CSS properties is we need to define a scope and we're going to use the root scope. So just colon root. That means we can use this anywhere. And uh, whoops, that's not right. <laughs> we want to add dash dash or hyphen hyphen. This is the syntax for custom properties. And then what we want to call it, which I'm going to call it primary color and just paste that in. Now to use this, we go back down to wherever we want to use it in the nav bar and we say var parentheses and then we can add that variable and then we'll grab this same thing and put it as the background color for the showcase. And now if we had this in a bunch of different places, we can simply change the variable like to red and it's going to change it everywhere. So there, these can be pretty useful. Now, let's see back down to the showcase area. Let's make the color of this white for some contrast. Um, and then I'm going to also just add a position relative so that if we need to position anything absolute within it, we can. And for the let's see, let's do the H1. So showcase H1. I just want to increase the font size because right now you can see, you know, these two headings are the same. This one should be bigger. This is the H1. This is an H2. So let's set the font size to 40 pixels. I'll make that bigger. I also want some more spacing, uh, some more margin on the top and bottom of the paragraph. Now, initially we have 10 like this, but I'm going to say for the showcase paragraph, let's do 20 on the top and bottom. OK, so that'll just add a little bit more space. Um, and then I think now we can start to work on the on this on the grid. We want to align these side by side. So we do have a grid utility class and instead of display flex, we say display grid. Now that doesn't automatically turn it into a row like it does with flex blocks. We have to add another property of grid template columns and define how big how how wide we want each column now. Just like Flexbox, when we use this grid class, it turns this into the container, the grid container, and then each direct element, each direct item here is a grid item. So we have showcase text and showcase form, which are, you know, this and this. So we want these to be in a row. And then here we can define how wide we want these. So we could do, for instance, 300 pixels on the first column and then uh, 200 pixels on the second. And you'll see this is now 300 and this is 200. This looks bigger just because the content ends. But if I open up my elements here, elements tab, you'll see. Uh, wait, what did I do? No, I did 300, 200. So you can see the first one is wider, the easier deployment. That's 300. The second one is 200. Now, we don't usually use pixels here. You can use percentages. Um, you can also use FR units, which are fractions. So if I wanted to do two fractions of the entire space and then one fraction for the second column, now you can see if I hover over these, 
you can see that the first one takes up two fractions of the entire space. The second one is one fraction. Now for this initial grid utility class, I want to have them both even, which is just one FR. That'll make them even. Another way to, to write this is to use repeat and say repeat twice one FR and that'll make them completely even. So if we check it out now you can see they're even now see how there's no space in between here. So there's no you know, margin or anything. We can use a property called gap, which used to be called grid gap. And I'm going to add 20 pixels for that. And now if I hover over it again, you can see that space in between. OK, so we can add grid gap. Now, I also want to add our justify content center and let's do align items center. So that'll center the items both horizontally and vertically. Now, if I save this, you'll see these aren't centered vertically, which is the cross axis in this case. So that's going to be, you know, align items. And that's because there's not a height. We do have a height on the showcase. So the showcase has a height of 400 pixels, but on the grid, we also want to add a height. So let's say height and let's make it 100% of its container, which will be 400 pixels. Now it'll put these down here in the middle. Now, as far as the, the grid for the showcase, I want to customize that a little bit. Uh, for instance, we have it split just one FR each on each side. I want to change that. So up here, we'll say showcase uh, showcase grid and let's set the grid template columns and I want to set it to a percentage so it'll be 55% for the text part and then 45% for the form part so the left side is going to be slightly wider than the right side and I also want to widen the gap a little bit so it's 20 pixels by default let's set this gap to 30 pixels so we'll just widen that a bit good now we want to start to style the let's close this up we want to start to style this side over here we want this we want a white card like a background with some rounded corners and then we want to of course format this form make the inputs look nice so let's start with the card class that's going to be a utility so Go down here and say card. Let's do a background color of white. And we're going to set a border radius of 10 pixels. So if we take a look here, you can see that's starting to create our card. I also want to add a box shadow. So box shadow, we want the horizontal offset, which I'm going to set to zero, the vertical offset. Let's do three pixels. We'll do a 10 pixel blur. And then the color is going to be an RGBA, which is red, green, blue, alpha. We want white, so it'll be zero for red, green, and blue, which gives us white. I'm sorry, black, not white. And then let's set the alpha value, which is the transparency, to 0.2. And if I save that, you can see it gives us a little shadow, makes it look like it's coming off the page just a little bit. I'm also going to add some padding and we'll do 20 pixels padding and then let's do a margin 10 pixels. All right, so we can add this this card anywhere we want on the site and it'll give us this little background. And let's also make the, uh, the color since we have a, a background color of white. Let's make the color of the card 333 so we can actually see the text. Now we want to style the form inside of it. So let's go back up here where we have all of our showcase stuff and we'll say showcase dash form. And for the showcase form, I'm going to actually position this to be relative because I want to add a top property. So if you want to if you want to use top, bottom, right, left, then you want to position it either relative or absolute. Um, I'm going to just push this down a little bit by setting the top to 60 pixels. So you can see that pushed it down. Now the height of this, I'm going to set to 350, which is going to actually make it go, you know, past the container here. And 
by default it's going to give us this scroll bar which obviously we don't want so we can fix this by setting on the uh, on the showcase grid right here I'm going to set the overflow property because that's what's happening we're overflowing that element I want to set that to visible and now if I save that that scroll bar goes away and this will kind of you know go down past this border right here which is what I want so let's continue on with the form so we have a height of 350 I'm going to set a width on this of let's do 400 pixels so that's going to make it a little smaller um, and then let's see what else do we want to do here let's add padding well, let's some padding the card has some initial padding I think we did 20 but let's do 40 on this so the card is just like a starting point forever for any element you add it to and then I want to just set the Z index here to 100 to make sure it's always in front and then we will add some animation later using keyframes where we have this come in from the side this come in from the side but that's not going to be until later now the let's see the inside of this we want to style let's start with the form control so we'll say showcase form and then the form control remember form control wraps the inputs I just want to separate them out by adding 30 pixels margin on the top and bottom so that will separate those out and then we want to style the actual inputs now for showcase form input that would actually target these inputs but also the button because we used input with a type of submit we don't want to style that here we just want these which are two text inputs and an email so let's target those by putting brackets in here and say type text and then I'll go ahead and copy that down and let's also do type email and we want to style these by first taking away the border so if I do border zero you can see there's no border at all but I do want one on the bottom so we'll say border bottom and that's going to be one pixel solid and the color I'm going to use for this is going to be B4B ECB so now if we take a look we have that now these still don't go all the way across so let's set uh, let's go ahead and set the width here to 100% so that these go all the way across and let's set padding on this to three pixels and I'm going to increase the font size a bit so let's do font size 16 pixels all right so that looks pretty good aside from the button we haven't done anything with that yet but these inputs look good except when we click on them we get that ugly border we want to get rid of that so let's say our showcase form input when it's in its focus state we want to take the outline property and we want to set that to none so now when we click on them we don't have that ugly border or outline whatever now before we get to adding the little slant here I want to just style the buttons because these look horrible so those are going to be utilities so we'll go down here and let's go under card so BTN is kind of like the base button uh, we'll have other classes to style buttons differently but they're all going to get this uh, this BTN so we'll start off with display inline block and that this will be on buttons and links so links by default well actually buttons and links are inline we want them inline block and we want to add some padding so let's do 10 pixels top and bottom we'll do 30 pixels left and right and we also want a cursor pointer um, the background I'm just going to set to the primary color by default so dash dash primary color and then the color of the text will be white uh, oops I forgot my semicolon here and we also want the border none and set the border radius I'm going to set that to five pixels so we'll go ahead and save that so this looks pretty good this button um, over here this has the same background color as the the showcase so we can't see the background now if you recall we also set a class of BTN outline on that button so let's add that so class BTN dash outline 
And basically we're just going to set the background color, set background color to transparent, and then just add a border of one pixel. We'll do white and solid. So if we save that, there we go. So we get that button there. Let's add a little. Oh, you can see the, the um, required attribute that we add makes all these required. But uh, let's have a, a, a somewhat of a hover effect. So what we'll do is say for any BTN hover, let's use transform and then scale and that will just scale the size and one is the default. So I'm just going to go to 0.98, which will scale it down just a little bit. So when we hover over it, we get that little effect. All right, and then that should do it for now. Um, as far as the buttons go, let's go ahead and add the slant here. Now, instead of adding a new element to the HTML, we're going to use the before and after pseudo selector classes or pseudo selectors. And we can do that on. The, let's take the showcase and we can do that by using colon colon before. And then we also want to add this on showcase colon colon after. Now, when you use before or after or both, you have to have a content prop or prop <laughs> using to react too much uh, content property. And we're going to leave this blank, but you could put something in here like you could put text and you can see it's going to put it before and after we're going to leave that blank. What we want to do is style this now. The showcase has a position relative. It should at least let's make sure. Yeah, so I set that to position relative. So this is going to be positioned absolute within that relative within that showcase. So let's say position absolute. And then we're going to set a height of, let's say, 100 pixels. And then since we made this position absolute, we can add, you know, top, bottom, right, left. We're going to set the set this to bottom, but I want to go below the bottom of the showcase, like down here. So we're going to do a negative value of 70 pixels. Okay, and then we'll set on the sides to zero. So right zero, left zero. And just to show you where this is and you know what it looks like. I'll set the background to red. OK, so this is the where we're going to add the slant. Now to actually add the slant, we're going to use transform and then skew Y. So transform with transform, you can use scale, you can rotate, you can uh, position it with translate or translate X, translate Y. You can also use skew. We want to skew it on the Y axis just slightly. So we're just going to do negative three degrees. So negative three DEG. And now you can see we have this slant. Now, obviously, I don't want this to be red, so I'm going to change that to white. And now it just basically looks like it's part of this. OK, and you can mess around with this if you want, like you can slant it less if you do two. You could do one. And it's barely slanted, but I, I, I like the three. Now it's going to go like right here, flat and then start to skew up. If we make this wider, you can see that area is flat, but I think that's fine. I think that actually looks kind of cool, but you can mess with it if you want. Uh, it's all it's completely up to you now just to make sure this works in all browsers. Let's add our prefix versions of this too. So I'm going to copy this down a few times and we're going to add our WebKit. So we want to do dash WebKit dash transform and that's going to be for Chrome and uh, Safari. Then we want Mozilla. So MOZ dash transform and then we want Microsoft. So Internet Explorer or whatever MS transform. So we'll just add those prefixes. I'm actually not sure if we need those anymore, but we'll just add them because I added them when I initially created this project. All right, so that gives us that. Now we're going to move on to the next part here. I know that took quite a while just to get what we have, but that's probably the most difficult part of this this whole site. So let's go back to our HTML and let's 
continue here. So we, the next part is the, the stats area. So we're going to go under this last section and let's label this stats and then let's add a section with a class of stats. And we want to use a container here because we want it to, to you know, we don't want it to stretch out all the way. We want it to end where the rest of this stuff ends. And we'll have an H3. So I'm going to add a bunch of classes here that we haven't created yet in the CSS, but we'll get to it. So let's call this stats dash heading. And then we're going to have some utility classes for like text center. If we want to center text also margin classes, my dash one is going to be margin on the top and bottom because Y is the Y axis. So, you know, vertical. If we wanted to do left and right, we could have MX dash one. If you wanted margin all the way around, you could do M dash one. So you can create these utility classes to help you out. So you don't have to add so much um, CSS and so much margin and padding on things like the whatever the the H3 here itself. Um, so in here, I'm just going to grab the text real quick for this. You can copy it from the repo if you want. And then underneath that, we want to have uh, basically three different areas with the I with an icon font awesome icon and some stats like the number of deployments. So I want to use the grid here and we have that initial grid class. But if you remember, that's only two columns, right? It's two even columns. I want this to be three. So I'm going to have a grid three class where we just change the number of columns to three and then also use text center. And then I'm going to have an my class. I want a little more margin. So we'll do my dash four. And then inside here, this will this will be a grid container. So we need some grid elements. We're going to have three divs here. So let's say div times three. And in this first one, we're going to have our icon. So we're going to use an I tag here with a font awesome class of FAS and a class of FA dash server. And we can use a font awesome class to make this a little bigger. And that's going to be FA dash three X. So you can do two X, three X and so on. So that'll be our icon underneath that will be an H3 with the actual stat with the number. I'm going to say 10,000. 349,405, 349,405. And then underneath that, we'll have a paragraph and we're going to have some text color styles as well. This is going to be text secondary. So it'll be whatever our secondary color is, which we haven't done yet. And let's say deployments. All right, so that's what these divs are going to look like. So I'm going to grab these these three lines here and in this next div paste these in. So this one is going to be the published, I guess, the amount of disk space. So we'll say published and for the stat here, it's going to be 987 terabytes and let's change the icon. So it's not going to be server. This one is going to be upload. And then let's go to this last div here and paste that in. And this one is going to be projects. And let's see the number here. Let's do two million. We'll say two million, three, four, three, two, six, five. And then the icon that I want to use from font awesome is going to be project FA project diagram. So let's save that. Let's take a look. So you can see that the content is actually under the slant that we did here. Um, so what we'll have to do is push that down a bit. So let's go to our style sheet and let's go right below showcase and say stats. And we'll add here. Let's do our stats class and let's add padding top and we'll do 100 pixels. So what that'll do is push it down below all this stuff here. Now I think what we'll do before we style like the stats heading itself, let's add the utility classes and this right here. You can see we used the grid class. So what it's doing is taking the first two divs out of the three and it's splitting them in two because remember we set on the util on the grid utility right here we set repeat to one FR. Now, if I do three, then it's going to line them up 
nicely. You know, it's not centered or anything, but you can see there's three even columns, but I don't want to set that on the initial grid. So we'll add that grid three. So grid dash three. And that's all we're going to do is take that and set that to three instead of two. Okay, now I think I've come to the point where I just want to cre create a whole new CSS file for our utilities just to split things up a little better. So in our CSS folder here, let's create a new file called utilities.css. And obviously you don't have to do this. You can keep it all in the same file, but I'm going to just go ahead and grab all of this. It just makes sense to me to split it up. So we'll save, we'll cut that, save it, and then put them in here and get rid of this comment. Okay, so that now you can see with healthy utilities, it's going to look like that. So we have to make sure we in include that in our HTML. So we're going to copy that down and we're going to include our utilities class first and save. And now it's going to go back to how it was. So now we just have these separate class, I'm sorry, separate style sheets for just basic styles and then any utilities that are to be repeated. So we know we have the text center. Let's add that. We'll go. I want to keep the flex and the grid stuff at the bottom. It's just my preference. So let's go right here and say text center. And we just want to uh, text align to the center. Okay, and then let's do the uh, the margin classes. So remember we have my dash one on the heading. We have my dash three, I think somewhere. What do we put? Yeah, so my one on the header and then the grid is my four. So see how close these are. We put that my four, which is going to put a lot of margin in between this. So let's let's add those. I'm going to go. You know what? Let's put that stuff at the bottom just because there's so much and I'm going to just label this margin. So we'll have my dash one and that's going to be margin on the top and bottom. And I'm going to use one rem. So a rem unit, if you're not familiar with this, is a it's a CSS unit that basically means it's a multiplier of the root elements font size, uh, meaning, you know, the HTML tag, which is the default is 16 pixels. So unless you specifically define, you know, the HTML font size to be something specific, it's going to be 16 pixels and one rem is 16 pixels times one. So this will give us 16 pixels on the top and bottom. Um, as far as, you know, my two, I'm going to set that say my two, oops. And I'm going to set that to 1.5 rem. So that'll be slightly bigger. It'll be whatever 16 pixels times 1.5. And then let's do so we'll do up to five. So my three will say that this is going to be two rem, not three two rem, which will be 32 pixels because 16 times two is 32. And then we'll take this will be my four. So margin on the top and bottom will be let's do three rem and then finally my five will be 4rem. So now if I save that, you can see we now have our margin here. If I open up my Chrome tools and check this out. So the MY1, you can see the margin there. If we go on this one, you can see the MY4. So now whenever we want to add top and bottom margin, we can use these classes. So we're almost creating our own framework here. Right. We have all these utility classes. It's, that's pretty much what Bootstrap is and Materialize and all these other frameworks. Um, but except we're not using those now. There's also I think there's some places where we're going to need margin all around. So what I'm going to do is just copy this and right underneath. I'm going to paste that in and I'm going to change it to just M. So M1, M2, 3, 4, 5. And then we're going to set it all around so we can just get rid of the zero because if we just put one, you know, 1.5 rem, that means all the way around. So we just want to get rid of those. All right. And then if you wanted to, you could do MX for margin 
uh, on the on the right and left, but we're not going to need that. I know we're not, so I'm not going to add them. And then I want to do the same with padding, so I'm going to grab all of these and paste that in and I'm just going to change let's say padding and we'll change all of the MYs, so I'll just highlight this MY and then command D to select oops, actually I went past it. Uh, let's see, I want this one, this one, this one, this one and this one and I'm going to change it to PY and then let's grab this margin, this one, this one, this one, this one, change that to padding. Okay, we'll use the same numbers and then down here let's choose M dash. We want all these and let's change that to P dash. I miss this one P dash and then take these change those to padding. All right, so now we have all these margin and padding classes that we can use instead of putting margin and padding on every single element that we want it on. All right, so hopefully you can see the use in this. Um, what else do we want to do? Are there any other? So we have grid three, text center, MY. So I think we should be good for now. So just just doing that, this looks a lot better. There's some, some other things that I want to do though. Um, specifically for this heading, I want to add some some stuff. That's why I have this stats heading. So back in our style.css, let's do stats dash heading. And I'm actually going to set a max width of 500 pixels to kind of squeeze it in like that. And then I want it in the middle here. So I'm going to set the margin to auto, which will put that right in the middle. Good. Now I want this stuff down here to be a little bigger like these uh, this text. So let's target the stats H3. And actually, we don't want to do that because we have this H3 and then we have these. So let's target the stats grid H3. So stats grid H3 and let's set the font size to 35 pixels. All right, good. And then this is in a paragraph, this, this text here. So let's target the stats grid paragraph. And I'm going to set the font size of this to 20 pixels. And I'm going to set the font weight to bold. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. Looks nice and clean. Now for the next part where we have the, the image of the CLI, I just want to take the final project here and just show you so I can kind of explain what we're going to do. So this part here, we're going to use the grid for this section and we're going to have three columns and two rows. Unlike Flexbox, we can have not only multiple columns, but we can have multiple rows. And this image here, this part is going to span two of the three columns and it's going to span two of the two rows. Okay, and it'll put these on the side here. So and I, I did this because I just want to kind of show you different ways you can use CSS grid, how you can span elements and stuff like that. So let's start off with our HTML and the image that we're using. You should have in images. It's going to be this right here, CLI.png. Uh, so let's go under stats, which ends right here. And let's put a comment. We'll say this is a CLI section class CLI. We want to use a container here and we're going to start with just the initial grid class and then we'll you know we'll add extra styles that we need and let's add for the grid items the image will be the first one that's going to be an images slash CLI PNG then we're going to have a card and an H3 inside that card that says easy to use uh, cross platform CLI and then we'll have another card and an H3 and this H3 is just going to say deploy in seconds. OK, so we'll save that. This is what it's going to look like initially. It's just a grid with the two, you know, two equal columns because that's what we have here. All these are in effect in this area. Now I do want to change some things up. So in our style sheet, Let's say CLI and I'm going to take the CLI dot grid 
and I want to change some things up. So for one, I want to have our grid template columns. I want three. So I'm going to say repeat three one FR. All right. So if I save that now, it's going to look like this. And that's not what I want. Right. We don't want just each one in each column. We want this one to span across two columns and then span across two rows. Now we only have one row, so we can actually set grid, grid template rows as well, which you don't see as much. And we'll say repeat and we want to do two one FRs because you, you can set the columns to be I'm sorry, the rows to be, um, you know, different units as well. We're going to use fractions. So now there's a there's another row here, but we're only filling the first three. Now I want the first one to, like I said, span over here, also span down. So what I'll do is I'll take the CLI grid and I want the first item. So I'm going to say I'm going to use a, a angle bracket here and say anything that is the first dash child. And what that means is just if we look at the CLI grid, which is this here, whatever the first child is in this case is the image. So I could just specify image, but I'm making it so even if you wanted to put something else here, it would work the same way, right? So the first child I want to take the I'm going to use the grid column property and I want to say I want this to go from one and I want it to span two. So if I save that now you'll see that this the first child here, which is this image is spanning across the grid from one to two. Okay, remember there's three total, there's three columns. Now I also want it to span a row, so I'm going to say grid dash row. And you'll see if, if you haven't used CSS grid like this before, it's really powerful. So you can create pretty much any layout you want. So I want this to span from one, or start at one, and then span two, and save that. And now it's spanning two rows. So it's spanning two columns, and it's spanning two rows leaving these over on the side here. OK, and that's the exact layout that I want. So, I mean, if you if you've been doing this for a while, like if you've been working with CSS for a while and you remember using floats even far back as, you know, using tables for layouts, CSS grid and Flexbox are a godsend. So if you're new to web development, consider yourself lucky because it used to be a hell of a lot worse. All right, so the next part that we want is this area here. So this extreme cloud hosting, this shouldn't be too bad. So we're going to jump back into our HTML and let's go under this section. We'll call this one cloud. So section dot cloud. And uh, I'm actually going to add some properties here. Now you see it as a blue background instead of adding that right on cloud we will have a BG dash primary class and then let's add some margin on the top and bottom. Let's add some padding top and bottom PY2 and then we want a container and we're going to use the grid here as well. So just our initial grid class. Let's center everything. So we'll have a class of text dash center and in here let's do a H2. And I'm going to have sp specific size classes for headings. So this one will be LG for large and we'll say extreme cloud hosting. And then let's do a paragraph. I'm going to create a class of lead for for if you want paragraphs to be a little bigger. And then let's do MY1, which we already have established. And we'll say cloud hosting like you've never seen fast, efficient and scalable. OK, so that's our paragraph underneath the paragraph. We're going to have a read more. So let's do an A tag here with the class of BTN. I'm going to have a class of BTN dark as well. And this will just we'll just have this go to features HTML and let's say read more. OK, so that div ends and then I want that image to be the second grid item, because if you look, we have this grid container and we just have this one div as the first grid item. Second one will be the image and that's going to be images. Uh, if I can spell images 
slash cloud, not CLI, cloud, cloud.png. All right, so let's take a look at our version here, which looks like this. So we have a little bit of formatting to do here. <clears throat> Before we do anything, let's, uh, let's see, let's do the, let's do the template columns for the grid. And so we have that image. So we want to format it like this, where this is, this has more room than this side. So let's go to our style CSS and we'll call this cloud. And we want our cloud section grid. And we're going to set the grid template columns. And then initially it's set to 1FR, 1FR. I'm going to set it to 4FR, 3FR to get the dimensions that I want. Now we can't see the damn image because it's white, but it's right here. So let's add our utility classes. Remember I added a BG primary. So I'm going to go back up here right under the button. And let's say backgrounds. We'll say backgrounds and colored buttons because I want to be able to have a background color for the BTN and BG classes. So let's do BG dash primary as well as BTN dash primary. And we're going to give that a background uh, background color of our primary color. So primary color and then the color of the text will be white. And there we go. So now we have our background and we might as well just finish these. I'm going to add a secondary color. So what we'll do is in our style sheet, we have our variables. Or I should say our custom properties at the top here, and we're going to add some more colors. So we have primary color. Let's copy that down. Let's do secondary color. And that's going to be just a different shade of blue. We're going to do one C3. F a eight, so it's going to be a darker blue and we're going to have a dark color, which is going to be zero, zero, two, four, or sorry, two, two, four, zero. So it's it's like a really dark blue. So that'll be we'll call that dark color and then we'll have a. Actually, I think let's just let's just do that for now. Actually, let's add a light color as well. So light will just be a light gray. So F4 three times and we'll say light color. OK, so now those variables are in the style CSS, but we should be able to access them here as well. Uh, so and we are, you can see right here. So we'll go down. Where, did, where was I? Where's the backgrounds right here, backgrounds and colored buttons. So we have our primary. Let's do secondary. So we'll copy this. And even if you don't use all these, at least you have them. So we'll change this, that, that and that to secondary. And then we'll do a, a, a dark and a light as well. Paste those in. We'll grab this, this and this and change that to dark. And then this, this and this and change that to light. Now, since this is light, we probably don't want white text. So we'll change that to a dark text. OK, so now we have we can use BTN or BG primary, secondary, dark and light. And here's the, the dark button. Now we need to add our text sizes, our text size helper classes for this stuff here. We have a class of lead and a class of LG. So let's go under where we have like all of our buttons and stuff, the buttons and backgrounds, and we'll say text sizes, sixes, sizes, and let's do the lead. So lead is meant to be like on paragraphs. We'll set that to a font size of 20 pixels. And then the the large, small, medium and so on. I'm going to use rem units here. 
much like we did with the margin and padding. So let's set the font size here. For, so small will do one rem, which is going to be 16 pixels unless you edit the 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 root font size, the HTML tag font size medium. Let's do a font size of let's say two rem, which will be 32. And then let's do LG. So font size for that will be three rem and then we'll have an XL as well. So XL, we're not going to use all these, but it's just good to have. Like I said, it's almost like creating your own framework. Okay, so I'll save that and now you can see we have our LG heading and we have our lead paragraph. So that looks pretty good. The next part of this is going to be the supported languages here. So let's go down below our cloud and we'll say this is the languages section. So sec section dot languages and we're going to have an H2. Let's do H2 and give this a class of MD, which is our medium class. We want it to be centered. So text center and we'll do MY2. So it feels like we're using something like Bootstrap, only it's our own custom CSS. And we'll say supported languages. Then underneath that, we're going to have a div with the class of container and we're going to use flex for this. We just want to align not left flex because we just want to align them into a row and each one is going to be wrapped in a card. So we'll have a card class and then inside that an H4 with the language name. So we'll say Node.js and then under that an image. And this is going to be images slash. And this is in the logos folder, so logos and then node PNG. All right. So if I just save that, we take a look. It's going to look like this. Now for the rest of these, I'm just going to grab them and paste them in because they're just divs with the class of card with a heading and whatever that image is. So they'll look like this. Now the specific CSS I want to add to, to these cards. So in our style, let's go down here. So our class of languages. I want to add here actually not languages, but languages dot card. I'm going to do the text align center here. Now we could add text center to all of these cards, but since there's so many, I'm just going to add it right in the CSS. And then I want a specific margin value here of 18. We'll do 18 top side, 10 pixel and 40 pixels. So if we save that, OK, there we go. Uh, now I want these to wrap. So if I make this smaller and we're going to do the media queries later, but just to make this more responsive, we're going to add a onto the flex. So let's say uh, languages and then the flex class. So that's the flex container. I'm going to add flex wrap and set that to wrap. So if I do that, you'll see that you know, it'll these will actually go on to the next line when the browser is resized. All right, um, see what else do we want to do here? The H4, let's increase that size a little bit and add a little bit of margin. So let's target languages dot card and then the H4. And I'm going to set the font size. Let's set that to 20 pixels and let's set margin bottom to 10 pixels. OK, now I also want to have a little feature where we hover over and it, it moves up a little bit. So let's grab, let's say languages card hover. So when we hover over it, I want to set the transform oops, transform and I'm going to use translate Y, which moves it along the Y axis and I want it to go up. So I'm going to do negative 15 pixels. If we do a positive, it will move it down. So if I go and I hover over, you can see that they flicker up. Now I want it to have a, a smoother effect. I want it to have a transition. So on the card here, I'll add 
a transition onto the transform property that I just added. And we'll do 0.2 seconds and we'll do an ease in effect. So now when I hover over, it goes up, you know, nice and slow rather than just flicking up. All right, cool. So let's see the next the last part of this page is going to be the footer. So let's jump back into our HTML here and let's add our footer, which is pretty simple. So say footer and we're going to use a footer tag HTML tag and we're going to give it a class of footer and also a class of BG dark and a padding of PY5. And in here, let's set a container and we're going to use the grid and we want it to be three columns. So we're going to reuse grid three. And let's see, we'll have a div with the, the site name inside of an H1. Let's say LaCurry or LaRuki. What did I call this? LaRuki. And then, yeah, so we'll do that H1 and then a paragraph underneath with the copyright. So I'll say copyright and we'll do ampersand copy, which will give us a little copyright symbol and we'll say 20. 20. Okay, so that's the first grid item. Then we want just a little navigation. So we'll do a nav tag here with a UL. And let's do an LI with a link to index HTML and home. Could have just copied the one above. Features. And ultimately, you could have like your privacy policy and stuff like that. I just didn't want to create links that go nowhere. So features and then docs docs. Okay, and then the final grid item is going to be our social icons. So let's do a div with the class of social and this will be just be a bunch of links and you can have this go to, you know, your Twitter page or whatever. Um, but yeah, and here we're going to have a Twitter icon. So let's do an I tag with F.A. When you use social media icons with font awesome, it's FAB instead of FAS and then FA dash Twitter. And let's make it a little bigger. We'll do FA dash 2x. And then I'm just going to copy this down a few more times. And then the second one here will be Facebook. And then we'll have Instagram. Actually, you know what? GitHub would probably be would make more sense. So let's do GitHub first and then we'll do yeah Twitter at the bottom. So let's check it out. That's what it should look like. Let's take a look at ours and we have some color issues going on here. Let me just check BG dark. Yeah, so BG dark, it is white, but the links aren't. So what we could do here Let's see, I guess we'll just add. Yeah, we'll just go down here and let's take all of these because we any links that are in these backgrounds, we're going to want those to be white. So we'll take that. That. And that. And let's just add on to these a tags. and set the color to white. OK, so now there we go. Um, this, these we want to space these out a little bit. So let's do that. We'll just go to our style sheet and say footer and dot footer dot social links. I'm going to add margin. And let's do 10 on the left and right. There we go. So we spread that out a little bit. So that's it. The only difference is I put documentation on this one. This is docs, but you can you know put whatever you'd like. So that's the home page. Now it's not responsive just yet. So if we make this looks absolutely horrible. So I think what we'll do now, I was going to do all the pages first and then do the responsiveness, but I think we'll go ahead and add our media queries now for the stuff on the home page. So we'll just make this smaller for now and we're going to just tighten this up a little as well. 
and we're going to have two separate media queries on our, in our style CSS. The first is going to be for tablets and under. And then we also want for mobile. Okay, so tablets and under, let's say at media and let's say max width. So we'll use 768 pixels here. So anything that's under 768 is going to be styled here. And then for mobile, we want to capture under, let's say 500. So at media, if the max width is 500 pixels, then we'll go ahead and style here. Now for like for the menu, that's going to be fine on tablets, even if there's more items, right? But on mobile, I'm going to change things up a little bit. So first of all, let's say the nav bar height, which initially is what 70 pixels, I'm going to set it to 110. Because what I want to do is put the menu items under the logo. So we have more more room for menu items. And of course, you could add like a hamburger menu or something if you wanted to do that. But this this is long enough. So for the flex, remember we have in nav bar, we have that class of flex. And it's set to it's a row by default. I'm going to set it to a column. So flex direction column, which puts everything on, which will put the logo and the UL or, or the nav on top of each other. And then for the nav bar UL, I'm going to add here padding 10 pixels. And I want to give it kind of a transparent background. So let's give it a background color of red, green, blue, alpha. We're going to do black, so 000, and then just 0.1. And it gives it that kind of cool, transparent background. All right, so I think that that looks pretty good. Uh, let's let's go on to the, the showcase part here. So I'm going to go up to the tablet view. And I'm going to make this a little bigger. So I don't know, we'll say like wherever 768 is. So if we say body, don't type this, I'm just body display none. So right here is 768, so I'll, I'll keep it there. Get rid of that. And then I'm gonna first style all the grids because there's a ton of grids here. Um, and I just want to stack everything. And this is going to be for tablets and under for so even smaller screens, I want everything to just be stacked instead of two columns here, three columns here, you know, three columns here with with a span. I just want everything to be in one one column. So let's let's take the grid class and then everything else where we customize the grid like the uh, not hero showcase. So showcase grid. We have the stats grid, we have the CLI area grid, the cloud grid. So all of these, I'm just going to set the grid template columns to one FR. So just one single column that it takes up the entire thing. I also want to set grid template rows because we do have the CLI area where we have two rows. So we'll save that. Okay, um, so this stuff, like this doesn't look bad, this doesn't, uh, this form we'll have to, we'll, we'll do some stuff with the heat, with the uh, showcase area, but this, this is fine. So let's, let's work on this showcase area. So we have our showcase now. Initially, the showcase is set to I think it's a height of 400 pixels. Now when we're on smaller screens, we're going to want that to be bigger. So I'm going to actually set the height to auto so that it just takes up the amount of the container. So you can see now it pushes down and the form isn't over the text and stuff. So we'll add that. Let's also style the showcase showcase dash text. So for the showcase text, I'm going to um, I want to text align everything to the center on, you know, small screens. And let's also add a margin to the top to push it down a little bit. We'll do 40 pixels. OK, 
Okay, and then for the form, we have our showcase form. I want to I want to move that to the middle on actually both horizontal and vertical. Let's set justify self. Now, justify content we've used a bunch of times. That's going to be on a, either a flex box container or a grid container and it justifies all of the elements inside. Justify self you put on an actual grid or flex item to justify just that item. So I'm going to set that to center. And then let's just set margin to auto. Okay, so now that form is going to be put right in the middle. That looks pretty good even where the slant is. And yeah, so I think that looks pretty good. That's fine. Now this the CLI area is the only area I have a problem with. Instead of having these, you know, on the same line because remember those are spanning. I'm sorry, this is spanning, which is putting those down. So what we'll do is basically reset this where we have this uh this span. So I'm going to just copy this and go down to tablets and under right under showcase form. And instead of spanning, we're just going to simply set grid column to one and grid row to one. So it's just takes up, you know, it's natural one column and one row. So I think that looks better. The footer. Let's see. Did I do anything? No, I didn't do anything to the footer. And this just wraps. This is using Flexbox and Flex wrap, so that's fine. So if we go down to really small screens, it still looks good. Image is a little small, but I, that's fine. And that still looks good. Cool. So the next thing that I want to do is the inner pages. So let's work on uh, let's work on the features page. So what I'll do is copy everything from this index page. All right, so we'll take all this and let's create a new HTML file called features.html and we'll paste that in and then I just want to get rid of let's see. I want to keep the footer, I want to keep the nav bar. So what we'll do is take everything from this section above the footer and go all the way up to where the nav bar ends which is let's keep going up here so right here so i want just the nav bar and the footer and we'll go ahead and save that and i'm just going to make this a little bigger again and if we go to features we should just have the nav bar and the footer so every new page you want to create you can just you know add this um Now we're going to want let's take a look at the final version here. So we're going to want this head area and then, you know, this and then we'll use the grid to align all this stuff. So it's definitely not going to be as much work as the home page. But uh let's go down under the nav bar and let's add the head area. So this is going to be a section the class of features dash head and of course we can use our you know our utility classes so i'm going to use bg primary and let's add some padding so py3 so this isn't going to be as hard because we already have all of these um you know these helper classes so we're going to use a container also use grid and let's add a div here so The two items are going to be this div with the this this text and then this image over here. So the first one let's do an H1. Let's make this really big so we'll use Excel and say features and then under that we'll have a paragraph with the class of lead and I'll just grab that real quick. Grab that text and then underneath the div is going to be image and this is going to be in images slash and we want server so we're going to use just server.png and if we check ours out it should look like this now we have some css to add here so let's go to our style sheet and we want to add some specific stuff for um 
for features. So let's go under, what do we have? Not Make sure you're not in your media query. We're going to go under languages here and above footer. And we'll say features. So first thing, the image is way too big. So I'm going to say features, uh, features dash head, or features head image. And let's set the width to right now it's set to 100% by default. Let's set the width to 200 pixels. Okay, now you see how it's I mean, this is using the grid. It's two even columns, one two one fraction columns. However, I want this to be aligned at the end. So remember that justify self that's going to justify just this item and I'm going to set it to flex dash end and it will push it over there. Now, let's see, I actually think that that's yeah, that's pretty much all we need to do there. So the next part is going to be this. We're going to call this subhead. So back in features, let's add some more HTML here. So we'll say subhead and this will have a section with the class of let's call it features dash sub dash head. And then I'm going to use BG light here for a background and PY three for padding. And we'll have once again a container with the standard grid class and let's add a div. We're actually going to I'm just going to copy what we have here. I could have just copied the whole thing because it's really just a div with some text and then an image. This is going to be server two for the image The text. Let's say the Laruki platform and then I'll grab Actually, we'll just use some dummy text here. Let's do lorem 30. All right. Now I want the actually let's not do Excel for the heading here. Let's do MD. And we won't do lead for the paragraph. So I want that to be smaller and then the image we want that to be smaller as well. So what we'll do is in our style sheet where we added it for the features head image. Let's add it for the what I call it. Uh, features subhead image. Features dash sub head image. OK, so that'll make that small as well. Wait, that's too small. Um, yeah, let's make that a little bigger. So we'll just take this and put that here and let's set the width to 300 pixels. And I also want to do the justify self because I want it to be at the end. So we'll say flex end there. So now this is a little bigger. The text is a little smaller. And now we're going to move on to this part down here where we have all these different cards and icons and stuff. So back in features, let's go below the subhead and let's create a section here. And this is going to be called features dash main. It's like the main part of the page. We'll do my two. So margin on the top and bottom. And we want this to be a grid of cards. So this first one will be card. I'm also going to add the class of flex because in the card we want to align these elements using flex. OK, and inside here we'll have an icon. Let's do uh, FAS for font. Awesome. And this icon will be FA dash server and let's do FA dash three X for the size. And then under that will be a paragraph and we'll do lorem. Let's try lorem 30. So if we go down here and take a look, so it has this card. Um, we will add some other styling to this. But for now, what I'm going to do is just copy the rest of these because they're all just card flex with an icon and a paragraph. So there's really no sense in just typing it all out. So I'll just grab them. I'll go right under this card flex div and paste the rest in. So they're just different icons and text and we'll save. And right now they're just like all aligned next to each other. But we're going to add some special styles for these. So let's go to style CSS and down here. Let's say features 
dash main. And I want to, first of all, style the icons. I just want to add a margin to the icons because you can see it's right up against the text here. So let's grab in the flex or let's say in the card the initial icon or the direct icon and then margin dash right and we'll set that to 20 pixels. So that's going to put some space in between those. All right. And then let's see for the grid. We're going to use some we're going to do some spanning here, much like we did with the CLI part on the home page. But first, let's just do features main and say dot grid and set the grid template. Actually, you know what? We don't have to set that here. We could just set grid three because I just want three even columns. So where we have our container grid here, let's say grid dash three. So that'll put initially, you know, three columns. So we don't need to put that here. Um, what I do want to do is add some padding, though, of 30 pixels. Like that. And then let's span. We'll take, I guess, yeah, we'll take the first one. We want to do this. We want to take the first one and span across all three. And then we'll take the second one and span across two. And then the rest will just kind of fall in line. All right. So if you want to pause the video and try to do that on your own, based on what we did before with the CLI part, you can do that. So I'm going to grab. Let's see, we'll just copy this and let's say features main and then grid. And I want the first element. So I'm going to just use this universal selector colon first child. And then I'm going to take the grid column and set that we will say one. And then we want to span that three. Okay, so we'll save that and now you can see that first one is going to span three columns Then I want the second one. So let's copy this and instead of first child, I'm going to use nth child because this with nth child, we can just grab, you know, the second, third, fourth, whatever we want. I want the second one. So I'm going to pass in two and we want to span two across. So we'll save that and now you can see this one is spanning two. This one spans three and then these are just all just normal. All right, so that should do it matches the final one. So that was pretty simple. Now we want the documentation page, which is this. OK, so it looks like this. Um, so what we'll do is copy features because it's, it's similar to that. So we'll copy features. We'll go to uh, create a new file here called docs.html. And we'll paste that in. And then let's get rid of. Uh, let's see, we'll keep. We'll keep the head. So all we want to get rid of really is the subhead in docs. And we want to get rid of the, the features main. And keep the footer. All right, so we'll save that. And then if we go to docs, we're just going to see this. So let's edit this part here. Uh, so that's going to be in the head area. We're going to change it from features head to docs head. And BG primary, that's good. This is good. We'll change this to docs. And let's change this. We'll say learn how to work with the uh, Laruki platform. And then the image is going to be docs. OK, so we'll save that. And the image is, is giant, but we can fix that by going to our style CSS. And let's it's going to be the same size as the features head. So where we have features head image, I'm just going to copy that and then we'll change this to docs head image rather than just create a whole new style. It's going to be the same thing. All right, good. So that takes care of that part. So the next is going to be the docs main. So let's go right under that. Say docs main, so section docs dash main. And I'm also going to add on to this margin on the top and bottom. 
and we want a container grid so you can kind of see the pattern that we have with these pages and we want to I'm going to have a card let's just see what this is going to look like so we're going to have two columns here we're going to have this gray card and then this will also be in a card with all this content we'll have some menus here all right so let's in this grid let's add a class of card and I'm going to give this a BG dash light because I want it to have a gray background and then P3 so padding all around and then let's do an H3 I'll give this a class this H3 a class of MY2 so margin on the top and bottom we'll say essentials underneath that we're going to have a nav because this is navigation a UL and then we want some list items and a link and these aren't going to actually go anywhere they would just be other documentation pages so we'll say introduction and let's do about Laruki and this one installation okay then we're going to have another menu so I'm going to just copy this h3 and this nav and then go right under this one paste it in and then this is going to be deployment and I'm just going to paste these LIs in here so setting up a container using CLI managing resources and so on it's going to look like that so far and then let's see we want to go after so we have the UL the nav and then this div is the first grid item so we want to create the second grid item which is the second column so right under that let's create a class of card and let's say h2 so this is basically the introduction page so just h2 introduction paragraph we'll say lorem 30 and we're going to have an alert here which is another um, helper class that we'll create or utility class so let's say alert and let's say alert success so same as same classes as bootstrap and we'll do like uh, actually let's have uh, an icon here we'll use FAS and then FA dash info and right after that icon we'll say lorem 10 okay so it's I mean we're, we still have some work to do here so don't worry about it looking pretty crappy so after let's see we have our alert and then after that we'll have an h3 we'll say lorem 3 so just some time just using dummy text now and then another paragraph and I mean you could put other stuff here if you want let's do lorem 20 here and then under that we'll have a link but let's give it a class of btn and btn primary and this is going to be a link that says install CLI and then under that we'll have an h3 we can separate these out a bit all right so underneath that we'll have an h3 and let's say requirements and under requirements let's do a ul and we'll have a list item with the specific requirements so windows 10 and let's say Mac uh, OS X and Linux and then another list item so we'll say Node.js uh, version 12 or higher and I mean again you can put other stuff here if you want and then we'll have another h3 with the install and here let's say let's put a paragraph and say this is for Mac using homebrew and we're going to we're going to have this as like code so we're going to use the html pre tag and also code code tag and let's say this is like a terminal line so money sign brew install laruki dash cli all right and then we'll do another actually let's just we'll just copy this copy this down twice so that that's on Mac so this will be or I should say that's for Mac homebrew this is for NPM so we'll say NPM 
will be npm install and then let's do yarn and that will be yarn install all right and i think that should do it so we'll save that and you know that doesn't look too good so we're going to fix it so let's go to our style css and let's see we have our docs head image so let's go under features so right under features let's say docs and the first thing i'm going to add here is um, for all the h3s so docs what is it docs main right docs main h3 I'm just going to add margin on the top and bottom of 20 pixels. And then for the grid. So the grid right now is just split. I want the first one to be one fraction, the second to be two, because I want this side to be wider. So let's target the docs main grid and let's set the grid template columns and we'll set it to one fraction for the first and two FR for the second. So now this is wider. Now we also want to align this up to the top. So let's add align items and we want it at the beginning. So we'll say flex star. Okay, and that will align it up here because remember this is a, this is a basically like a row. So align items is going to be along the Y axis. If you wanted this down at the bottom, you could set this to flex end like that. Okay, so you can I mean, you can set these layouts to however you want. Now, the next thing is going to be, let's see, let's do the these over here, the navigation, because that doesn't look too good. So we'll say docs dash main and we'll style the nav li's. So the font size I'm going to set to 17. We'll make them a little bigger. We'll add some padding on the bottom. So five pixels and let's also add margin bottom five pixels and I want a border on the bottom. So border bottom one pixel CCC solid. OK, so that looks a little better. When we hover over links here, I just want it to get bold. So we'll say docs main links hover, set the font weight to bold. OK, so you see it just turns bold. That's fine. Um, and then for the alert, we want to style the alert and also this right here, the code. We want it to look like this. Uh, the button that looks good, but we want this style and we want this style down here. So let's go into utilities CSS. And let's see, we have a lot of stuff here. We'll go under. Let's see, we'll go under the text stuff and say alert. So we have an alert class. And we'll have like, um, you know, different color alerts, just like Bootstrap does, where we have success, you have danger, which is red, um, stuff like that. So the initial alert will set the background color to our light color. So var dash dash light color. So right away, it's going to give it that light background. We want some padding. So padding, let's do 10 pixels top and bottom, 20 left and right. Let's make the font weight bold and let's add a margin let's kind of separate it out from everything else. We'll do 15 pixels on the top and bottom. So that's the initial alert. Now I want some space between the icons. So let's say the alert icon. I'm going to add I'm going to add a margin right of 10 pixels. OK, that looks better. And then let's do the alert success. And I'm actually going to add success and error as uh, 
as variables, or I should say uh, custom properties. So in our style sheet, styled CSS, let's go up here and let's add dash dash success dash color. And we'll set that to hexadecimal value of 5 CB 8 C. Okay, so that's like a green color. And I think it's even I think it's the same as bootstrap. And then this one will be D say D 9 5 3. 4F, which is a red color, and this will be error color. Okay, in case you want to have an alert that's an error. So back in utilities for success, let's say background color var dash dash uh, dash dash success dash color. All right, so we want to make the color the text color white with that though. All right, and then if we have an error, we'll say alert error and set that to the error color. And you could do others if you want, but that's all we need here. And then I want to style the code in pre tags down here. So that's not really I mean, it's not a class. I want to style the element themselves. So we'll just we'll put that in our style CSS up here with the base styles. So under image, let's say code pre set the background uh, to 333. We'll set the color to white and we'll set the padding to 10 pixels. All right, so let's take a look. All right, so that looks pretty good. I would say it looks you know similar to what you would see in actual documentation. Now we the last thing I want to do as far as uh, utility classes is have some text color classes. So let's say this is supposed to be the introduction page, which is this link right here. So let's have a, a class on that. So where we have the, the link here of introduction, let's say class equals and let's say text dash primary. Okay, so obviously it's not going to do anything yet. We're going to go to utilities. And let's copy. Oops. So where we have our background stuff right here. Go ahead and just grab primary, secondary, primary, secondary. Didn't we have a light? Oh, I put that below that. All right. So I'm just going to cut this and put this down here. All right, and then we'll just copy this and we'll go right under here and let's say text colors. And we're going to do like, uh, you know, text dash primary. So I'm just going to copy that and this one will be text secondary text dark. text light. And I know we're not using all these, but it's just good to have. And we don't want to set the background color. We want to set the color to these because it's text. So we just want to get rid of those. So now if I save that and I go back, we should have the, the primary color here for the text. So now we just want to make the inner pages responsive. So if I make this smaller, you'll see this doesn't look right. We want to stack those. If we go to features, We're going to want to stack this stuff and get rid of any spans. So let's go to style CSS and go down. Let's go down to our media queries. Well, wow, we wrote a lot of CSS. So down to our, you know, max width 768 here. And we already have all of this stuff stacked with just this with one column. So we're just going to add to that. So in addition to these, we'll say features, say features main and then grid. And we also want our docs main. So docs main grid. And we'll save that. So now you can see that those will stack on top of each other, although. You know, the, the image and stuff. 
we want to fix that that's not in the middle so let's uh, we'll go under this stuff here still within the 768 media query and let's say features head and we want the subhead as well so features subhead and also docs head and I just want to I want to align it all to the center so text align center and then we also want to justify the image to the center because this is not, you know, this is off center. So I'm going to copy this and we just want to add IMG onto the ends of these. So IMG, uh, IMG, and then we're going to set justify self to the center. And now those images are in the middle and that looks pretty good as far as these two go as far as the docs head goes uh, and this looks this is fine but what we want to fix is the spans down here because remember we have this the one that spans three the one that spans two so let's uh, we'll just type it out down here so let's say features uh, features main grid and we want the first child because that's the one we span three so let's say any element that is the first child and I'm also I also want the second one so we'll use features main grid and we want the element uh, we want to put a space here we want the element that is the second one so we'll use nth child 2 and we just want to set grid dash column because it's initially set to you know one and then span so we just want to set it to one so grid column one and save and now it's going to just knock everything into place here. All right, so I think that's it. Our site is, you know, completely responsive. Awesome. So the next thing I want to do is the animation. So we're going to add a little bit of CSS animation here. So let's uh, let's close these pages here we'll just we want to stick to our style sheets for now or style CSS I should say we don't need utilities and we're gonna create some animations so let's go above our media queries right below the footer and let's create our animation so we're gonna be using keyframes and all we're gonna do is slide slide in certain content from the right left top and bottom so we're just going to basically manipulate translate X and translate Y. So let's create our first keyframe. So at keyframes, we'll call this slide in from left. And we're just going to say at zero percent, we want to set transform and translate X. So with position of the X on the X axis to negative. 100%, which is going to basically start off the screen to the, I just went to point like you guys can see me. So it's going to start, you know, if it's coming in from the left, we want it over here. So the negative value will push it over on the X axis over to the left 100%. And then we want it to end up. So let's say at 100%, we want it to end up translate. Uh, I mean, transform translate X. We want it to end up in zero, just its normal position. Okay, so pretty easy. And then I'm just going to copy this and we'll go ahead and paste that in. This will be slide in from right. So for slide in from right, we want translate X to be positive 100%, which will be this way off the screen, off to the right. And then we want it to end same place, uh, translate X zero. Now we want to do slide in from the top and the bottom. So once again, we're going to say slide in from top. So for slide in from top, we're going to just change it to translate Y negative 100. So it'll start up above off screen and it's going to end up at translate X zero. So that should slide in from top and then slide in from the bottom Let's say slide in from bottom so translate y will be positive 100 percent 
So now we just want to apply these to certain elements. So let's go up to our showcase area and we want to add this the first one on the showcase text which we don't have actually defined. So right above showcase form, let's say showcase text and set animation and we want to set it to this is going to come in from the left so slide say slide in from left and the duration will do one second and we'll do an ease in so if I go ahead and save that and I go back here and I reload it's going to come in from the left in a duration of one second and I want the form to come in from the right so I'm going to copy this and in the form I'll go ahead and paste that in and change that to slide in from right so now when we come to the site that's going to happen and then this stats I want to come up from the bottom so let's go to stats right here and paste that in. this is going to be slide in from bottom yeah so that looks pretty cool now in small screens I mean it doesn't look bad to come in from the sides like that it's fine but I just want to show you if you want to change that like if you want the text to come in from the top and the form from the bottom we can do that down in the media query so it's we wrote a lot of CSS uh, let's see so if we go showcase text right here which is in the media query and we do slide in from the top. Now you can see it comes in from the top and on the form we could do slide in from bottom. Okay, so I mean if you want to do that you can if you want to leave it how it was that's fine as well. But now we have some basic animation and I think this looks pretty cool. You know, I think it's a, it's a decent website. Um, so that's it as far as creating it. So now let's go ahead and deploy it to Netlify. Okay, so now we're gonna deploy this to Netlify and this is gonna be pretty simple. We just need to basically create a Git repository. We can push it to either GitHub, Bitbucket or GitLab and then we can just go into our Netlify dashboard and say new site from Git. And there's also a form service which we're gonna implement so that we can make our request form on the homepage work. So before we do any anything with Git or, or anything like that, let's just add the necessary fields to our form that we need. So if you look at the form tag here, there's a name, a method of post and a data Netlify attribute set to true. So we want to add that to our form here like that. And you also need to add the hidden uh, hidden input right here with the name of form name value should match whatever the name of your form is in this case contact so let's put that right under the opening form tag now we also want spam protection so if we go to spam filters there's two things we can do we can use a recaptcha however where our form is located on the card it's a it has a fixed height so it's going to mess up the layout so i'd rather use this honeypot method where we can create a, uh, an input that we can hide and basically you just don't fill it out if you're a human a bot would fill it out so we want this right here netlify honeypot equals bot field we're going to put that in here as well okay and then we're going to grab the paragraph with the class of hidden and then this label and input and put that right under the hidden field now this is going to show so we have to hide it and we're going to hide it based on this hidden class so in our style.css let's go in right right after all the base styles above the nav bar and say hidden dot hidden and we're going to set visibility to hidden and that's still going to take up all the space so i'm just going to set the height to zero and save all right so now we should be all set to deploy so I'm going to open up my uh, VS Code terminal with command tilde. You can use your, you know, your Mac, Linux, Windows command line, whatever. And I already have Git installed. If you don't have Git installed, you can go to git-scm.com or you can use Homebrew on, on a Mac or whatever. There's many different ways to install Git. So let's say git init. That's going to create a repository on our machine. It's going to be in a folder called .git, a hidden folder. 
and then we want to add all of our files to that staging area. So we want to git add dot and I do have a git crash course if you're interested in that. And then we want to commit our files. So let's say git commit dash M and then just a comment. We'll say initial commit that's going to commit it to our local repository. Now we want to create a GitHub repository. So log into GitHub new repository. We'll call it Rookie dash website and description. We'll just say cloud hosting website and create the repository. Okay, now we're going to grab this command here because this is going to add this repository as our remote. So I'm going to paste that in enter and then let's just go ahead and get push dash u origin and then master because we're pushing to the master branch. All right, so that should be all set. If we reload our repo on GitHub, we should see our files. Now we can go over to Netlify and say new site from Git, GitHub. It's going to authorize and then you want to find that repo that you want to uh, that you want to deploy, which is Laruki. Just search for that. Okay, and then we're going to click on the rookie website. You can have different branches that you want to deploy. We just have the one master branch and then no build command. Everything is in the root, so no publish directory, no custom variables. So we'll go ahead and deploy the site. So it says site deploy in progress. And then it's going to give us this funny looking URL. If you want to add a custom domain, you can just click right here. Um, so we're just going to open this up and you can see that our site is now published on the web and we can go to our features page, our docs page and the form should work because of how we set it up. So let's try it out. We'll say Bob Smith company name test company and email. We'll just say test at test dot com and we'll go ahead and send. So by default, it's just going to give us this thank you message with a back to our site. But you can, in fact, create a custom success page and uh, you can set that up within Netlify. You just have to look at the docs. So now in our Netlify dashboard, we can go to forms and this is our contact form. And you can see Bob Smith. If I expand it, it has the name, company and email. Okay, so really cool, really easy to deploy. You get this form functionality. There's a bunch of other stuff you can do as well. So we've created this website. We've deployed it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it was a long one and um, that, that's it. Thanks for watching.